Hello, welcome to day three of the SAT 10 day out review practice for the SAT test. We're going to get started by looking at the CASPAR for informational tag. As you can recall, before you were examining the acronym as it related to literary nonfiction or prose text. Today we're going to work with informational text as that is the other genre that you study with the SAT test. You have one literary nonfiction or prose selection, two historical texts or texts related to social studies, and then two scientific texts. So you are exposed to a variety of genres of text, and it's just important that you know how to move forward with intention as time is of the essence. When you're reading informational text, the C stands for the central focus. That could be a person or a topic. A stands for adjectives, just as it did with the literary nonfiction text. The S is exactly the same as with the literary nonfiction Casper as well. The S is for setting, which is the when or where. And remember, it's essential to understand the context of what you're reading in order to better understand the ideas that the author is communicating. The P is slightly different because instead of problems, you're looking at particulars in informational text, such as facts, details, and the author's purpose for including those details, and even for writing the text. The A is similar again. The A stands for actions, the events or the situations posed in the informational text, and then the R is different. Instead of being the resolution, the R stands for reflections. That is your opportunity to evaluate or judge what you've read. So you could give an opinion, you could maybe reflect on what you've learned, or you could pass judgment on the author's ideas and his stance. Let's take a look at the rationale and the directions before we move forward to the example. Again, your teacher may have printed out the actual handout so you have the opportunity to read the excerpt that we're looking at for the example, which is make sense out of a rational behavior. If you don't have that text, it's okay. You'll still be able to understand the example. The rationale simply points out why it's important to use CASPAR to frame your thinking before reading and to help you to pick out specific information while reading. It's so that you can very quickly identify and understand author's key ideas. That leads to more effective and appropriate inferencing and conclusions so you get more questions right on the test. And then the directions, of course, tell you to read the article and complete the chart in the quick write. As a reminder, you will not have the opportunity or the time to create the chart and to do a quick write, but it is that thinking about those particular CASPAR elements and the main ideas from the beginning, middle, and end that will help you to answer the questions appropriately. Let's take a look at the actual completed CASPAR chart for informational text. The C, or the central focus, is centered on people, and more specifically, employees who seem to act irrationally. And the topic is irrational behavior in the workplace. The adjectives that are used to describe the people and those situations uh, involving the people who seem to act irrationally are resistant, illogical, frustrating, etc. So as you can tell by the adjectives that the author uses, this is not a feel-good article. This is actually a pretty critical article which emphasizes some of the behavior surrounding illogical decision-making. Framing the information that the author gives you with what society believes at the time is very important. So as you can see, this is a current day situation. Uh, 2012 is when the article was published. And then the place that is discussed in the article is the workplace. Next are the particulars, the facts, the details, and the purpose for the text and or the details that the author provides. First, colleagues do things which seem illogical. The second detail is that they actually believe their decision making is what's best. The third detail lets us know that the author suggests that we don't try to persuade people, but instead try to understand 
his or her rationale for what he or she believes, because in that way we won't become frustrated. The author wanted us to be able to reflect on illogical behavior. Also, he wanted us to be persuaded that the best course of action relates to understanding rather than trying to change those behaviors. Looking at the A for the actions or events and situations, one event is that a head nurse in a hospital would not allow people to be discharged over the weekend, even though they needed the beds. And the situation basically says that although the nurse was intelligent or intelligent people in general, sometimes refused to use logical thinking. So the nurse refused to let people go despite the fact that beds were needed. Finally, for reflection uh, and opinion in this case, it's sometimes smart to seek to understand people versus making yourself frustrated by trying to change them. So that's an opinion that I gleaned based on the actual article. Now we're ready to put everything together so that we can understand the main points from the article and we can also reflect at the end on the author's purpose and his use of rhetorical devices. In the beginning of the article, we learn that intelligent co-workers make decisions that don't seem logical. Uh, there is even an example included so that we can more clearly see what the author is pinpointing. He then points out that while outsiders see the thinking of these co-workers as illogical, the co-workers themselves can make sense of their decision making and they stand by it as logical. Uh, the author ends the article by suggesting that we try to understand behaviors because it is not worth it to try to change the irrational behaviors or the decision making that we disagree with. His purpose for writing the article was to share his argument that although illogical decision making takes place, it is important for people to move forward without trying to change those people. He wanted to persuade us because the best way to deal with the problem would allow us to bypass frustration, um, the frustration that we would face trying to change an illogical thinker's behavior. So how did the author convey his message or his point? So he used a rhetorical question to introduce the topic and to allow the audience time to reflect on the situation he deemed problematic. He then used an exclamation mark to emphasize his point about illogical behavior. Uh, finally, he used the quotation marks because he wanted to highlight uh, certain ideas as um, key, almost in a sarcastic way, like an air quotes way. So now you've been able to walk through both the Caspar for literary nonfiction and for informational text. You are more than prepared to attack the CASPAR for informational text on your own. You're going to knock it out the park. Good luck.